The earth is burning up. We've all seen this on the news. Spain, Portugal, Italy, Greece, France, Algeria, the US, Canada, Hawaii, and even Russia are being ravaged by flames. And these certainly aren't the first climate cause catastrophes to be spreading throughout the globe. But each year, the impacts we are seeing from the climate and ecological crises seem to be getting worse and more noticeable. The media, finally, is making it very difficult for anyone to ignore the real realities of our climate and ecological crises. But this video isn't one of doom and gloom. Instead, it's going to be a story of hope of how we can all change the world for the better, to live a more fulfilling life in harmony with each other and the planet. It's clear what is causing the world to be on fire. The word is in literally in the name, global warming, or more accurately known as climate change. Of course, the actual wildfires blazing throughout the world right now have other causes to their first sparks, such as campfires, cigarettes, or lightning. But it is the impacts of climate change, such as an increase in extreme weather conditions, or just generally warmer and drier conditions, that both make the risk of wildfires more prominent, and also causes wildfires to spread at a much greater rate. And it's not just fire that's the problem. Climate change also brings tornadoes, floods, desertification, increased food insecurity, and, well, the list just goes on. Basically, climate change is slowly turning our planet from this into this. In fact, in 2022, we were at an average of 1.15 degrees warmer than in pre-industrial times. We could reach the critical number of 1.5 degrees warmer than in pre-industrial times, which you may have heard spoken about before in just five to 10 years time. At this temperature, 70 to 90% of coral reefs will die and extreme heat events will get 4.1 times more likely. With a two degree rise, 49 million people will be impacted by sea level rise and 410 million urban residents will be exposed to severe droughts by 2100. At three degrees, almost all mountain glaciers will be lost and the Amazon itself will start to die back. At 4 degrees, well, you get the picture. But this video isn't supposed to be giving you all eco-anxiety. Sorry. I wanted to use all of these negative climate stories circulating across the media and the news right now to think about what the world could look like and how different it could look if we all came together to act. probably all already aware, two different levels maybe, of the quick fixes we can make to halt climate change in its tracks. After all, the world just needs to stop using fossil fuels, stop industrial animal agriculture, stop trawling the oceans, stop deforestation, stop biodiversity loss, and stop producing such mountains of waste, and we'll all be fine, right? But wait! That will completely change society as we know it! Without fossil fuels, we won't have cars and planes and boats, and people won't be able to get around. Countries won't have enough energy. We won't be able to eat our homes. Without industrial animal agriculture and ocean trawling, we won't have enough meat and fish to keep up with current consumption levels. And without deforestation and the destruction of biodiversity, we won't have the space to keep developing for an ever-expanding population. We can't just stop everything. Luckily for us, though, we have some quick-fix technological solutions to these issues. The solution to all of our problems, my friends, lies in advanced technology. The glory of an increasing GDP means we can invest more into finding technological solutions to keep society ticking over and mitigate the impacts of the climate crisis. Carbon sequestration machines will soon be able to mitigate all of the fossil fuels given off from planes, cars and boats. Plus, let's not forget that we can just plant rows of trees in the meantime. We are getting better at building batteries from lithium we are mining from South America, which means you can continue driving in style. Machine-made meat is increasing in demand, and even better, we have now come up with ways to make money from increasing biodiversity and decreasing carbon. Want to mitigate the negative environmental impacts your new luxury development is causing? Buy a carbon credit or biodiversity token. I told you, where there is money, there are a solution to all of our problems. Whilst our technocrat friend over there came up with some great solutions as to how we can combat each individual cause of the climate crisis whilst keeping society chugging along as normal. Let's just rewind to the start of this video. The whole world, and thus all of its interconnected systems, are on fire. So there's not much point fighting each individual flame with increasingly newer and higher tech solutions when the whole planet is burning up. 
just to try and keep society the same for those who are scared of a little bit of change. Not to mention, the majority of these technologies have their own problems. Instead, what we need is a systemic shift, one away from capitalism and consumerism, where we can all meet our wants and needs in harmony with each other and the nature around us. Some people think these solutions lie in multiple different areas, such as degrowth, the circular economy, or even socialism. I think the answer to how we can stop the planet from burning lies in communalism. Everyone has a different ideal version of what they want the world to look like. my fantasy utopia. Sadly, the world is never actually going to look as pretty as a Ghibli movie. But in general, the majority of us need and want shelter, good food, clean water and sanitation, comfort, love and healthy relationships, security, access to knowledge, fulfilling experiences and entertainment, and harmony. And I'm probably forgetting a few. And, you know, for the planet itself to be a comfortable, beautiful and nourishing place to exist. This is where communalism and social ecology come in. Simply defined, social ecology is the idea that our ecological problems have social causes. This theory was developed by Murray Bookchin, who wanted to highlight that social and environmental problems are interlinked, and the root causes of the climate and ecological crises are inseparable from capitalism and our domination over the planet and each other. Butching developed social ecology into the politics of communalism, which centers a community-led, highly participatory and grassroots approach to solving our social and ecological problems, where democratic decisions are made by communities organized into confederations. In confederations, communities can decide on issues directly without the need for politicians. When issues affect multiple communities, individuals are delegated on behalf of their community to communicate. Basically, communalists believe that the power to solve our climate, ecological and social crises should remain with the communities themselves. By taking a communalist approach, we can solve our social and ecological problems from their roots, rather than taking the current top-down approach, which, let's face it, doesn't really seem to be working. The problem that Bookchin highlighted in Social Ecology being that our social and environmental issues are very much separated, is very apparent today. For example, instead of understanding that trillion dollar companies are in charge of the transport industry, and that transport needs to be brought back into the hands of the public and deprivatized, we blame the individuals who fly and offer them carbon offsetting schemes. Instead of trying to solve the damage the industrial animal agricultural sector is doing to the planet by helping to decrease food waste, increase food resilience, and make sure communities themselves have the resources they need to grow their own regenerative food and supply their communities with it. We just build technology that can replicate the scale of industrial animal agriculture and make regenerative food a luxury only the rich can afford. The list of examples could just go on. But our current solutions to our climate and ecological crisis just exacerbate the social problems at their roots, rather than trying to solve both environmental and social problems in a holistic way. So what would a society built on the theory of social ecology and communalism actually look like? Well, we'd have social ownership of our utilities and transport systems meaning all the resources going in could be reinvested in those services to improve them. This would mean no more sewage leaking into our ocean, for a start, but also better public transport and less car-centric cities. Privately owned businesses could be replaced by workers-owned cooperatives, meaning that any enterprise, such as a bakery, farm or electronics factory, would be owned by the workers themselves. Communities would thus be able to develop in ways which would directly address their own issues, rather than in ways which just benefited their outside shareholders. For example, this could be by implementing repair workshops to help their goods and utilities last longer, growing food regeneratively in community farms which could then be distributed to everyone, and building more houses as and when was needed. And all of this could be done in a scalable way, so communities could increase the resources and services that they needed as and when they did need them. But going back to the topic of this video, it's easy now to see how communalism and social ecology could help to solve many of the social issues communities are currently facing, such as the housing crisis, 
food poverty and general low quality of life faced by millions in the UK today alone. But how would prioritising a community-led approach actually stop the planet from burning? Well, for a start, by deprioritising GDP and profit growth, and instead developing resources and services as and when we needed them, this would automatically massively decrease the impact we are having on the planet. Resources and services could be created regeneratively, in tandem with local ecology. After all, communities are already striking change all across the UK and the globe. Regenerative, community-supported agricultural schemes, which help to increase biodiversity, also supply food to local food banks, enabling food to be more widely distributed in the community. Tool libraries exist, where communities share tools they need to do various odd jobs, rather than always buying new ones and thus lessening their impact. Apps and groups allow people and communities to share second-hand resources, such as clothes, furniture or utilities instead of buying new ones, also reducing their consumption levels. Local community-led environmental groups are cleaning up beach waste and saving wildlife. And quite literally, on-the-ground groups of community-led local volunteers are banding together to fight their own local wildfires. Together, we can share the Earth's resources for the good of everyone, seizing the endless growth of consumption we are currently in and creating a better and more ecological world. Together with a communalist approach, we can put out the planetary fires of ecological collapse and climate change.